Hey guys, welcome to this video. It's an update video to the Elite TI playlist that I have. Uh, we're going to be talking about the features that are available in version 5. If you've uh, found this video through the playlist, it's probably near the end, so thanks for watching all those. Lawrence has made a bunch of changes uh, on the software, and I want to go through those with you today and just show you the differences. That video series I made on the Elite TI was from March of 2016. I think it was version 2.0 or 3.0. Um, we're up to version 5.0 now. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at what we have here. Um, just one thing before we start too, uh, if you notice the touchscreen a little glitchy, these units, I think I may have covered it in that series, they, they don't like it when they're out of the water, you have to hold the ground on the battery, so I'm just holding the power pack in my hand here, so that's all that is. Okay, so we're going to start in the sonar portion of it, and specifically structure, we're going to go in there and show you this new feature that they've added. This is probably the biggest thing that you're going to find on these units now, and biggest reason I would say to upgrade your unit. So what we have is fish reveal, and I've already got it turned on. If you go into advanced, that's where you can turn it on, so you can toggle fish reveal on and off here. And go and just go back here to show it to you. So what it is, is we're on our down scan page and we have all of our sonar returns on this page as well. Now I've done another video on it covering it in greater detail so I definitely suggest you check that out. Um, but what we can see now is our fish arches on our down scan screen. So this is our traditional sonar, our chirp sonar, and then we have fish arches on our down scan screen so we can see high detail structure and mark fish at the same time. So I'm just going to go back here and just show you a few things that I like to do with it. First off, um, in setting up the, the unit, the color palette is the first thing I like to do. I find the blue color palette is the best for the, the down scan. It really makes the fish arches stand out quite a bit better. I'm just going to change the range here just so we can kind of see that in a little bit better detail. Um, the other thing when you're, when you're in here is in advanced, your surface clarity is really controlled by the down scan. As you can see, we're adjusting that in the down scan portion of it. So you can really turn that up to high, filter out the down scan information, which isn't such a big deal, um, but we still get our fish arches. Now we can go down to fish reveal options here, and this is where we're gonna control the sensitivity of the, the fish arches and, and, and targets that we're picking up in the water column. And then we also have our color line feature here, where we can see the intensity of the targets. And again, we have surface clarity as well. Um, in this particular demo, I haven't seen a whole lot that that does. Um, it probably will be like the traditional sonar and, cl and clear up a bunch of clutter. So here's a really good example of that down scan down there. Um, you see the, the bait balls, but we see a few game fish in it. Here up on this weed edge, we can see there's a bunch of fish hanging off to the side of it. You know, and that's something that would be harder to interpret with just these little dots on the down scan imaging. So that's one real big improvement they've made. Now I talked about surface clarity a little bit. We gotta go in and revisit that because they've changed the way that that works in the sonar portion of it. So in the past on the sonar, I've always recommended going in and going into advanced noise rejection and surface clarity, turning those off. And reason being, as I've said in the previous videos, is it filters out a lot in the water column. Well, Lowrance has really changed the surface clarity now. We can go ahead and turn that on high. And what it's actually gonna do is just clear up our upper portion of that water column, but your fish targets are still gonna remain. Now in the demo, unfortunately, it doesn't do it, doesn't show you uh, what the, the different levels are. When you're on the water, you're gonna just notice this really clears up. So play around with that a little bit more. Um, that's one main change that they've made to how it operates. So, and the same thing kind of goes for the noise rejection. You can turn that up a little bit higher now, and you don't get as, um, as as much pixelation as what you would get in the past on the sonar targets. So those are two changes you definitely want to play with a little bit more. Um, as I said in the previous video, turn those off. I would highly recommend playing with them to turn them on now because they are much more useful than they have been in the past. Okay, another thing they've changed with this update is in our view is the depth line. I've never really recommended using that before because it was a white line along the bottom, wasn't all that useful. Well, now you can turn it on and you're gonna see that depth line as a black outline of what the sonar is seeing as the true depth. So it's basically the center of the cone angle that um, is giving you that line. Really gives nice definition to the bottom, uh, especially when you're fishing uh, weeds or any other you know, brush structure that's coming up off the bottom. Gives it the image very similar to the older LCX units that had one of the best sonar images that Lawrence has ever made. 
Okay, so we'll go into our settings menu now just to show you the differences that there are in there. A um, few changes have been made, not a whole lot. Uh, one thing just to point out again in the features in advanced, some new things that they've added. Um, you may have to turn those on or off in here. So just if you're not getting one of these features, that's where you would do that. Um, another thing that they've added is this registration. So we can go in here and because this unit is Wi-Fi, we can register the unit. Okay, there's a, a whole tech support side to this as well now. So what they want you to do is, is connect it to the internet. So go ahead and do that. You're just gonna connect to your, your local Wi-Fi hotspot, okay? Just like you would any other phone, you're just gonna type in your um, Wi-Fi password there. So then you just follow the on-screen prompts, be able to register your unit that way. Now, another thing in the about menu here, we have support. So we can go to support, couple things we can do, we can check for updates. So if there is an update, all you need to do is put a, a card in your um, card reader there, check for updates and obviously be connected to Wi-Fi. You can also create a report. Now here you can fill out all this information. So if you are running into an issue with your, um, with your unit, you can do all this. Tech support will probably get you to do this. You can add screenshots of your problem. So you can save this and then send this into tech support so that they can see everything that's going on with your unit to help troubleshoot your problem. Okay, I'm back out here. Nothing new in navigation. In chart, um, there's a couple new things. We have sonar charts, live tide correction. You can enter that um, if you need a, a tide correction for that when you are doing your sonar chart live recording. Your installation menu, uh, I believe has changed a little bit, um, but the, the basic idea is all still there the same, really no changes that way. Autopilot control wasn't something that I got into, I don't believe in the last video series, but um, this is where we can set that up and we'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Fuel hasn't changed, alarms really haven't changed. I don't think they've added any new alarms um, that, I, that I could see, I don't really use that a whole lot. And then the units, again, obviously that hasn't changed. Wireless, here's where you're gonna connect in. Um, they have enabled the Bluetooth in these units. I can't remember if that was enabled prior. Um, that will allow you to connect up to power poles and deploy them. So everything else here in the settings is the same. Really haven't had any changes as far as this goes, as far as the pages go, that's all the same as well. Now into the mapping portion on the unit, got an avionics chart in here. One thing that they have added is the ability to make your own maps. You know, just about everyone could do that. Um, so what we're able to do now is go to Sonar Charts Live. We can turn the history on. And you do have to have a active subscription to Navionics, which I don't think the card I have in here is active. Um, but we do have the history of when it was active. You can see these are the updated contours that the unit has made based off of the depth that it's seeing at that Latin long. So we have our Sonar Charts Live options in here. You can set the transparency of it. So if we want to see the, the main chart through it, we can do that. And that's a feature I like to play with quite a bit just to see how everything matches up. And then you can also do a minimum depth. So we're going to only start recording at a certain depth. Okay, now if you have an active uh, Navionics card in here with an active subscription, when we go into overlay, we're not going to see Sonar Charts Live History, we're going to see Sonar Charts Live. So now that will allow us to draw all that mapping, and as you can see, it's starting, I believe it's starting to happen there. You can see around the boat, it's drawing that mapping. Now, unfortunately on this lake, I didn't download the, the map, but uh, you get the idea. It's drawing our contour lines as we go. So from the GPS standpoint of this update, this is definitely going to be the biggest portion of it where you can do this live on the unit. And we also have this Sonar Charts Live option here. And again, same, same type of thing as what we have in the Sonar Charts Live history. So in order to access this, it's through the overlay. And again, you do need the Navionics um, Freshest Data subscription to be active. So whether you have a Navionics Plus card or an update card, you have to have that active. It costs about $100 a year to, to have this feature. As soon as you your subscription expires, like the card I just had in the unit, we only get the history. We don't get the live data anymore. Now, another feature that's been added, and you can access it from just about any screen, is this bar right here. And it's another panel. You can see how the orange box switches between the sonar panel and now around the chart. So it's just an active window panel. We can do the same thing and we can come here and now we have the orange box around this and that's our active window. And if we tap it, it brings out our, our uh, autopilot information. So if you have a MotorGuide XI5 connected through NMEA 2000 with the uh, gateway kit, you're able to 
do all your control right from your unit. You don't have to use the motor guide remote. So what we have here is we have the ability to do anchor. So we can anchor right on that spot. We can go just press here and then now we're right there. If we need to jog left a couple um, feet. So if you hit it once, it goes five feet. Hit it again, it goes 10 feet. You can go back, you can go forward, whatever you need to do. Um, then you can turn it off by putting it in standby. That's what standby will do. If you wanna do a heading lock, we have a heading lock right there. We're able to increase the speed that we're going at. We can turn the prop on or off. Um, we're able to move it left or right as well on that heading. So that's our heading lock screen. So that'll keep you, if you wanna just go to a certain point on land, that'll allow you to get there. And again, it has a standby button to turn that feature off. You can also navigate a trail. So if you put a route in here, you're able to navigate that. You know, for example, you're fishing a weed line, you can um, save your points along that weed edge, um, especially this, this is really helpful when you're using structure scan. Okay, so with this navigation portion of the um, autopilot control, what we could do is actually go and save a bunch of waypoints along this rock edge here on the side imaging that we're seeing, and then go and run that and create a route from it. And then our trolling motor would take us point to point to point to point. And if we wanna anchor on those, you know, we can just hit our anchor button and we can keep us right on those spots if we start to catch some fish. So you can see how this rock point curves out like this. We could create a route off of that and then follow that exactly. So we wouldn't have to be going along and uh, doing that manually. You know, right along, this looks like an old road bed or something in here maybe. Um, we can just do that and stay right on the structure, keeping on the fish. So having that XI-5 connected to your unit is definitely helpful now with this, um, with this new sidebar that they've put in. It also gives you a top bar now that will give you information. I don't think there's anything you can do with that, um, but it'll give you information as to what uh, status your trolling motor is in. So if we just go into standby, it shuts it off. If we do a heading lock, it'll tell us how fast the heading lock is set at and then uh, what our, our course is. And as you can see, we just adjust that like so, increase our speed. So you got all this control right on the unit now. Okay, and the other thing too, when we're in the heading lock screen, we go to a sonar, another page. And even if we close this off, can we swipe that away? Oh, gotta tap the side there. And still get your heading lock info even when you switch pages. And we can do that on, you know, just about any page. Okay, so with these units, we do have wireless control with our smartphones. Uh, if we go into settings, and we go to wireless, we can go um, to, I believe, client settings, or no, sorry, uh, wireless devices. We have our internal wireless, so we can see this is our, our wireless uh, on the unit. Let me just turn this brightness down for you a bit. Okay, and uh, we're just, we can look for that in our Wi-Fi settings on our unit, and then it asks us for a password. So we tap this, and then there is our network key, and I believe you can change that. So we're just gonna enter that in quickly here. Okay, you can click show password on your phone just to double check you got it right, hit connect. And then now it's obtaining that IP address and now we're gonna be connected up to this. So as you can see, we're connected but we don't have internet, that's okay. Okay, then you can go to your Google Play Store and uh, type in just Lowrance, but I think what we're looking for is the Link app. So I'm gonna install that. Okay, one of the last things I wanna show you in this series is just some accessories that are available. This is the standard mount that uh, comes with these Elite TIs. This is the Elite TI5 and just uh, snaps right in there. Ram Mount actually makes this really cool adapter. It's got one of their Ram balls. This is the uh, B size ball for the five inch. There's also a C size ball, which is a one and a half inch, not the one inch ball, which would work very well with the um, larger unit. And it just snaps right in like so. So now we can eliminate this mount, have a Ram Mount, and uh, we're good to go. I use this one on my snowmobile for navigating out ice fishing. Just pop it off just like so. These are great for a boat, they're about 50 bucks um, or less, and uh, you're good to go with this on just about any style mount. You can get handlebar mounts, you can get just an adapter to go to a boat, you can put these on kayaks. This is definitely an accessory you should be buying when you get your Elite TI unit. This part here from Lowrance, this is an adapter cable. And this is gonna be really important for anybody who's upgrading their system. So if you've already got a unit on your boat, I'll just pop this out of the package so you can see. If you've got a Lowrance unit on your boat that uses this style connector, this is the commonly called seven pin blue connector. This here is a nine pin black connector and that's what comes on these Elite TI units. This will allow you to adapt your old transducer. Now, if you have a 
um, just a single frequency or dual frequency, um, just standard sonar transducer like 83200. You won't get the down scan or total scan imaging, but this will allow you to use that transducer if all you care about is depth. If you have one of the um, blue connector HDI transducers, this will allow you to use that transducer on your Elite Ti. So those are a couple of accessories you should pick up when you get an Elite Ti. So this is the new upgrade for the Elite Ti units. Definitely want to do this 5.0 upgrade on your unit. The fish reveal that we're looking at here is the biggest thing. And I know we covered a lot real quick in this video, so if you need further explanation on anything or if you're having trouble figuring out something on your unit, just please comment below and I'll be glad to help you out. Um, you can see these Elite Ti units are just really incredible units, what you can do with them. If you can't decide between one of these and an HDS unit, take a look at the uh, video playlist I have on that to show the differences between the Elite Ti's and the HDS Gen 3's. That'll also apply for the most part to carbon units. And also take a look at uh, the Elite Ti uh, setup video. I have about six or seven videos in there on how to set these units up. So really appreciate you guys watching and uh, please subscribe to the channel, like the videos if they help you out. Thanks a lot.